Welcome back to the Here's the Deal channel. The other day I published a video called Wait Till You See What Nebraska Police Said About the New Constitutional Carry Law. That's where Nebraska became the 27th state in the union to become constitutional carry. And in that, I dealt with the fact that the police chief there, her name is Teresa Ewens, and we're going to find out what she says here. We're going to listen to her talk here in a second before this committee. But what we found out is the police chief wasn't happy. And the reason I wanted to do this supplement, the reason I call it a vital supplement is because I'm not cherry picking here. This isn't an isolated incident where some half cock police chief somewhere in some podunk police department is unhappy about the second amendment being allowed to run wild. This is something that's epidemic. It's not isolated. So here's this Teresa Ewens, the police chief for the Lincoln, Nebraska Police Department. This right here, we're going to be listening to Chris Bailey, the assistant chief of police of the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department. There's the Dallas police chief and all the Dallas officers not happy with the fact that the Second Amendment is being allowed by legislators to be unfettered. This right here is Indiana State Police Superintendent Doug Carter. And a theme that you're going to hear over and over, you're going to hear it from Teresa Ewens, who's the Lincoln police chief. They're going to say, we're firm believers in the Second Amendment, but... I, look, I, I am a believer in the Second Amendment. Absolutely. I know some people might have feelings. I've been here for five months, I know. But, and I am from California. But, you know, I do believe in the Second Amendment. There's no but in the Second Amendment. It says shall not be infringed. It doesn't say shall not be infringed unless public safety is jeopardized. It doesn't say shall not be infringed unless you put on the chopping block the safety of officers. See, the safety of the people will always be the alibi of tyrants. They're going to use that as the justification to move in on and curtail and infringe on your rights. And we see it time and time again. This right here is Teresa Ewens. She's the police chief for the Lincoln, Nebraska Police Department. Listen to what she says here. Uh, my name is Teresa Ewens. First name is T-E-R-E-S-A. Last name is E-W-I-N-S. And the Chief of Police for the Lincoln Police Department. I'm present today to offer testimony in opposition of LB-773. Also, I've been asked to... In opposition to LB-773, which is in opposition to constitutional carry. She's sitting there in opposition to the Second Amendment that she swore to protect, defend, and uphold. We just need to make that clear. Um, state that op there is opposition from the Police Chiefs Association of Nebraska, as well as the Police Officers Association um, of Nebraska. So she represents a whole slew of people, including the police unions and several police departments who stand in opposition to the regular citizenry being allowed by the legislature to carry firearms, which is a Second Amendment right, which is actually it's an unalienable right. It is a natural right. She is standing against the natural rights of individuals to protect themselves. And she's even going to make the, make the case later that she wants you to be dependent on her and her department if something goes down. After review of this proposed legislation and internal conversations of its impact to our organization and the community of Lincoln, I, do, I have some major concerns. One, I've broken it down in, into the letter that I, I wrote um, into three really specific areas officer and public safety. Well, Lincoln is... Notice what came first? Officer safety. That's what Terry v. Ohio from 1968 is about. Officer safety trumps individual rights. She doesn't care about your individual rights. And she really could care less about public safety. It's more about officer safety. Or public safety, you would think, would come first. And they betray themselves every time they flap their gums generally a safe community. We have experienced our share of gun violence related to gangs, drugs, and robberies. Just wanted to point out, she's using the euphemistic buzzwords, gun violence, gun control measures, gun safety legislation, all the buzzwords to diffuse people and to blind their eyes and keep them from seeing the truth of the matter. Allowing persons to freely carry a concealed weapon, and that means handguns, shotguns, knives, and rifles per this legislation will make our job of safeguarding Lincoln more difficult. So the argument is, 
if we allow the peasants to be armed, that's going to make our job more difficult. Translation again, if we let the Second Amendment roam free in Lincoln, Nebraska, that's going to make our job. We can't do it. If our job becomes more difficult because we let the peasants have rights, sorry, can't do it. That's what she's saying. This bill will allow the criminal element of our communities to carry legally as they may not be a prohibited person. Without a permitting process and training, you'll have individuals who shouldn't be carrying and carrying without the proper skills necessary to assess the situation <coughs> and determine when the lethal force is lawful. You know, like they can determine when lethal force is lawful, you know, like what Philip Brailsford did to Daniel Shaver. Philip Brailsford hidden his merry band of misfits over there in Mesa, Arizona. Or what about the Glendale Police Department ganging up on Johnny Wheatcroft? Or what about the, the death of Eric Garner or Philando Castile? And the lists go on and on and on. You mean those kind of rational decisions? When a copper comes on the scene, we know that, they're, we know that they specialize in de-escalation techniques, right? No, actually, that when they arrive on the scene, escalation goes through the roof. Uh, fear goes through the roof. Tensions go through the roof. And then somebody ends up, uh, you know, perishing. This also increases the propensity of, for mistakes, which can result in innocent people being injured, including our officers. Next uh, thing I'd like to point out is background education and training. Nebraska self-defense laws are complex. Those who use a firearm in self-defense must do so lawfully or be exposed to both civil and criminal penalties. Officers are required to go through a background check, hours of training, and <coughs> certification process. Without requiring a permitting process where training and background checks are required, our communities will not be safe. Here's her argument. You need permission from the government before you can exercise your unalienable. Then it's not an unalienable right. You need permission. You need to actually come to the government and go, am I good enough? Here, here's my information. Can you tell me, please, if I'm good enough to exercise my inalienable rights, please, Mr. Government? That's what she wants. She's saying, if you want a weapon, you got to go through the government to get cleared. Um, the one thing I do, I want to kind of get off script a little bit, is no one's mentioned the need to call 911 in their testimonies. And as a chief of police coming from a city of 800,000 people and worked in the worst crime areas, I will tell you, not calling 911 is a huge mistake and take it upon yourself to do what law enforcement should do. So she's saying, if you get in a bind, if it's two o'clock in the morning and the intruders are in your house, we do not want you to call upon 1911, not 357, not 40 cal, not nine millimeter, not AR-15, not AK-47. We want you to depend on the 911 system because when seconds count, police are minutes away. That's what she's saying. We want you to 100% depend on us. What about the 911 system? Use that instead of drawing your pistol and saving your family. And, and according to statistics, a high percentage of the time, the cops don't get there till after the crime is committed. What good is that? What good is a phone in your hand dialing 911 when you could pull something else out of your pocket and take care of the situation yourself and then go back to bed? All right, so that was Lincoln, Nebraska Police Chief Teresa Ewens. Right here is Assistant Chief Chris Bailey, the Assistant Police Chief of the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department. We're just going to listen to some of this right here. Well, there's heated debate over dropping Indiana's requirement for a permit to carry a handgun. The state's top police officer, State Police Superintendent Doug Carter, is against the bill. Now IMPD's Assistant Police Chief Chris Bailey also against it, and I asked him why on tonight's Unfiltered. Assistant Chief Bailey, good to see you. Thank you for taking some time. Why do you feel the need to write this op-ed? Well, I think it's important that uh, those of us who have leadership positions within the city make our uh, you know, opinions known to those that, that, that make public policy. And I think that this one uh, has been really important to us and, and to IMPD um, you know, as we fight gun, vi gun violence and murders and non-fatal shootings and, and shots fired in our city, that uh, this is an important tool that our officers have. And uh, we uh, expect there to be some consequences of, of having this tool taken from us. If the governor goes ahead. So what tool is he talking about? What is the tool of the police department? 
The tool is a violation of your rights. The tool is he is counting on an infringement of your rights to keep the police department safe from people who shouldn't have a gun. This is a statement that he's talking about in this little news segment right here. No other profession needs as many skills while facing as much scrutiny. Law enforcement officers deserve community support, and it's clear they need it now more than ever. The heavy responsibilities we place on our officers means they need every tool available to meet the ever-growing expectations from the public. Last week, the General Assembly passed constitutional carry. No! No! which would eliminate the license requirement to carry a handgun. In other words, it would eliminate the need for the common man to go beg the government for a right that they have anyway. With 23 years in law enforcement, I have witnessed firsthand the devastation caused by illegally possessed guns. Families have been destroyed and neighborhoods stained with trauma after murder. This dangerous public policy, the dangerous public policy of returning to the Second Amendment, let's be clear about that, will embolden those who are legally prohibited from possessing a gun to freely carry them on our streets without common sense checks. It's always about common sense. Hey, violating your Second Amendment right is common sense. Infringing on your right to be an American is common sense. That's what they're saying. From law enforcement, it will continue to fuel the unacceptable level of violent crime we are experiencing in Indianapolis. He ends the statement by saying, as public servants, we should be committed to all of those we serve, not special interests or the vocal minority. You can't be committed to everybody you serve. You know what you can be committed to? You can be committed to protecting everybody's freedoms equally, and they are not committed to that. And then he says this, we owe it to our cops and more importantly, our neighbors to be reasonable in the exercise of the Second Amendment. Therefore, I urge Governor Holcomb to veto the legislation passed last week, removing the requirement for a license to carry a gun. In other words, I urge Governor Holcomb to continue to trample Second Amendment rights so that we, the police, can be safe. And like I said, it is not an isolated case. This is uh, one of the police chiefs, Indiana State Police Superintendent Doug Carter, saying, I'm a firm believer in the Second Amendment, but anytime you see that, they're not a firm, firm believer in the Second Amendment. I also unapologetically believe that no constitutional right is unlimited. Really? Do tell. What does shall not be infringed mean anyway? The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That sounds pretty unlimited to me. I don't stand up here and claim to understand your world because I don't. I don't. Please don't claim to understand mine. I do. I actually do. Most people who understand authoritarianism and brutality understand your world perfectly fine. So the bottom line to this is that we have cops who swore an oath to protect, defend, and uphold your constitutional right to be secure in your person's houses, papers, and effects, and your right to keep and bear arms. And yet, time after time, every time they open their mouth in opposition to things like constitutional carry, we know exactly where they stand. If you disagree with anything that I said, use the comment section and air your disagreement. I want to hear it. None of us is greater than all of us. No one of us has all knowledge and we can all learn from each other. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my private email list through my website, highimpactflix.com, and I will see you in the next video.